<laughs> okay, this is not one of those hurry, we're running out of silver videos. This is not one of those doomsday scenario type situations. But there is a strong possibility that if the trend continues, 90% silver may be less and less available for us in the future. And I'll tell you why this is. Silver Joker here. Okay, so if you follow my channel, you know that I don't just stack silver because it's good for my financial health with it, which it absolutely is. I stack silver because I really like silver. I like everything about silver. I like the color. I like the weight. I like the way it feels in my hands. I like everything about it, especially some of the historical aspects of silver. So I'm constantly reading about silver, constantly studying so I can tell you that the idea of us running out of 90% silver has been around for a while. Okay, so why are we running out of 90% silver? Okay, so listen. In the 1960s, the U.S. Treasury moved from being a net buyer of silver to being a net seller of silver. <laughs> in 1960, it sold 22 million ounces and used 46 million ounces in the coinage. The very next year, it sold 63 million ounces and used another 56 million ounces to replace silver coins taken out of circulation by stackers slash investors. You know, people wanted those coins. Okay, the, the Treasury quickly realized that, you know, if this trend continues, there would be no way they would have enough physical silver to back their silver certificates. Because remember, there was silver certificates. A lot of you guys that collect currency you know, old currency know this, right? So they needed to have the silver, physical silver to back those. And also they had to continue to make, you know, silver coins. So if they kept selling as much silver as they were and replacing the silver that was being taken out of circulation by us stackers back in the day, then they would not have enough physical silver to continue this trend. So in 1961, the treasury decided to begin phasing silver out of the currency. You know, it started with the $5 and $10 silver certificates, basically by ordering them out of circulations. Okay, so you they could no longer make any more of those. So the ones that were out there were out there. You took them into a bank or whatever. You could get your equivalent physical silver for them, and they wouldn't issue any more. In November of 1961, the government suspended all silver bullion sales by the Treasury at that fixed price of 91 cents. So if you was buying physical silver from the mint or the treasury, you were paying 91 cents, right? So what do you think happened when they suspended those, those fixed 91 cent sales? <laughs> exactly. The, the market price of silver it went up. It quickly went up. So in June of 1963, the treasury replaced the $1 silver certificate with the federal bank note, basically what we are using today. So the $1 silver certificate was the last part of the silver in currency that the government issued. It was over. So once that was done, that was it. They still had 90% silver in the coins. By 1963, uh, silver prices reached $1.29. Now think about that. ninety-one, A $1 for the silver certificate, but silver price of silver value is $1.29. So that means your if you went and got physical silver, it was actually worth more than the silver certificate. So what do you think everybody did? Well, they took their, their, their silver certificates straight away and got physical silver for it because the physical silver was worth more. You know, but it, but it didn't stop there because the price kept rising and soon it became more profitable to melt silver coins for the silver content than just to spend the coin. In 1963, while they were in the process of phasing uh, silver out of the currency, the Treasury resumed its bullion sales. And between 1963 and 1965, the Treasury sold something like 342 million ounces of silver and used another 814 million ounces in its coinage. 
You know, much of that silver, like I said before, was quickly bought by stackers, or investors, who believed that the price of silver would rise sharply once the Treasury no longer supplied the market with large volumes of silver. Okay, so they saw the writing on the wall, right? I mean, they saw that the Treasury was getting out of silver. It wasn't going to no longer back the silver certificates with physical silver. It was no longer going to continue to supply uh, bullion sales. They, they, they saw that coming, so they figured they better buy as much silver as they could, especially the 90% uh, silver coins, which were be getting ready to be phased out, was getting ready to be stopped. And so they saw an opportunity there. I mean, they assumed with you know the passing of the Treasury silver sales and coinage programs, the market would need to recover increasing amounts of silver from scrapped items. And many market participants like we do today, like we believe today, believe that there was some manipulation going on. One of those things was, you know, they believed that the treasury was restraining the value of silver by supplying both the market and industry with large volumes of silver. I mean, that was going on. So they kind of kept the price low by just flooding the market with physical silver. And so now once they were no longer going to be involved in that kind of manipulation, they felt that the price was going to, you know, that restraint was going to be released and silver was going to grow. So everybody started buying silver so they could have it when industry and the market needed it, which was actually a good idea. People started accumulating large amounts of physical silver. I mean, they started buying it up, including lots and lots of 90% silver coins. But they weren't just buying 90% silver coins for the coins. Because remember, the, there's more value in the silver than the coin. So what they were doing was they were melting these silver coins down. Just tons and tons of 90% silver coins were being melted down and the 90% silver was being recovered from them uh, during this time. And it's estimated that the coin melting rose from 10 million ounces in 1960 to over 30 million ounces. 30 million ounces of 90% silver being melted down by 1965. I mean, and this, this trend just continued. I mean, all the way through from 1965 to when you guys remember uh, when the Hump brothers tried to uh, corner the silver market. And that triggered what's come to be known as the great silver melt of 1980, where silver prices rose to such a level that everybody wanted to cash in. Everybody wanted to cash in their silver. So what they did is they took just tons and tons of uh, silver, 90% silver coins and melted them down for the silver inside them. And I've read stories that claim some of the private mints received and processed 90% silver coins in lots and lots of 55-gallon drums. That's how the 90% silver was shipped off to different mints to be processed for their silver in 55-gallon drums. And this lasted a long time. And so there's a lot of 90% silver out there, and it is absolutely no doubt about it fact being used up, being destroyed, and the silver content is being extracted from these beautiful historical silver coins. And this is continuing. It's still going on to this day. Lots of the coin stores and bullion dealers that you sell your 90% silver to, well, once they accumulate enough of it, they just ship it off to a mint. And that mint just melts them down. Now, they are some People out there like me and many others who just buy as much as we can. So there's a lot of 90% silver in the hands of private people, which is a good thing. But that's only going to be for what it is because we're not selling it. You can't get it because more people are buying it and less people are selling it. Now, it is still available in a lot of places, but I believe it's becoming less and less so. And it's not just because people are buying it and hoarding it. It's because it's being destroyed. It's being melted down. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, it is a good and it's a bad thing. The good thing is that the demand is going to grow greater for 90% silver. People are really interested in 90% silver now. Just in the time that I've been stacking silver, I've seen the price and the value rise significantly. Uh, and if you've been stacking silver for any length of time, you know that 90% silver is, is not junk silver at all. It actually is premium silver now. It has reached the premium level. And we're not talking about the Morgans and Peace Dolls. We're talking about just regular 
pre-1965 constitutional silver. And so the popularity has grown, so that makes the value higher. The bad news is that since the, <laughs> since the popularity has grown and there's less of it out there, it's going to continue to be less and less and less till eventually it won't be available. I mean, that's just math. But this is the main thing for me with constitutional silver. We are geared to recognize this type of coins as money, as something to barter with. And since 90% silver, constitutional silver, junk silver, has 90% silver in it, it is real money. It is the promise fulfilled in a coin. And it's a shame that a lot of these coins are being destroyed for the silver content. These beautiful constitutional silver, historical silver coins are being destroyed at a rate that can't be sustained. So what are you going to do about that? Well, I would say grab as much constitutional silver as you can get your hands on. It is a good way to protect your financial health and it's historical and it's becoming less and less available, I believe. And according to the information that I've uh, come across. So anyway, that's really all I want to say about that. Are we running out of constitutional silver? I believe we are. Is it something to panic over? I wouldn't say so unless you just are all about constitutional silver. But if you just want to add it to your stack, you can still get it. But at some point, it's going to not be available. Maybe not even in our lifetime, but at some point, it is going to be used up. It's not created anymore, and it's being destroyed. That's facts. That's all I got to say about that. I hope this was interesting for you. Like I said, I don't just stack silver just for my financial health. I love it. I like every aspect of it. I like the history of it. And so if I can share that passion with you, that's what I want to do. <laughs> anyway, I appreciate you guys stopping by. Keep stacking. Peace.